guys, Skatey Skate Kate here, ready to play Secret of the Old Clock, Nancy Drew number 12. Super excited for today's stream, today's game. Um, I just want to say a quick thank you to everybody who came for my stream last week. Uh, I played Secret of Shadow Ranch and had a great turnout, was super, super excited and pumped. Um, we... Um, let's see, just kind of some background for this game. Um, let's see. So this actually is set back in the 1920s. This is like one of the only games that, that Nancy kind of goes back in time, I guess. Um, and the premise of the game is Nancy is visiting a friend um, whose mother passed away and, and she inherited the family in and so she's having to take care of everything. Um, but one of her mom's friends uh, is coming to stay with her and help her kind of get everything together and, and ready and, and um, everything to carry on with business um, while the friend is still under the age of 18 and then she'll kind of be on her own after that. So she has a guardian with her um, and some cool features in the game um, that I kind of think is fun is uh, this is kind of the first experience we have. Well, now let me think back. Yes, this is the first chance we have to um, kind of drive around. Um, we get to have like a bird's eye view of Nancy driving in a car and she drives around town. Um, and that kind of ends up playing a big key role at the very end of the game. We have to chase the bad guy. Um, and what else? We get to play some mini golf. That kind of is a feature here in this game. Um, so yeah, let's just go ahead and start the game. Oh, I see some people are already on. My friend Brittany, my student Lena's on. Hi guys. Thanks for the sweet compliment. All right. We're going to start. Welcome to my latest case, The Secret of the Old Clock. To start, choose Junior or Senior Detective. If you're new to adventure games or need some help, click on Tutorials. Okay, so we are going to just get the into year, Senior 1930. Detective mode. The place, the road to Titusville, where we find Nancy Drew behind the wheel of her blue roadster, pondering this question. Why did Emily Crandall, a girl whom Nancy knows only through their mutual friend, Helen Corning, ask Nancy to drive all the way out to the Lilac Inn to see her? Does it have something to do with the fact that Emily's mother died barely a month earlier, leaving Emily to run the restaurant with only her guardian to help her? And more important, why, when she called, did Emily sound so desperate? The spunky teenager turns off the main road, blissfully unaware thing. that Emily isn't all that awaits her at the end of the driveway. No, Nancy Drew is about to get her first taste of the mystery, intrigue, and adventure that are to become her destiny. Okay, so lots of information there. Um, so this cute little setup is Lilac Inn, and as if you come, if you aren't already aware. Um, the Nancy Drew games are either loosely or very closely based off of Nancy Drew books. And um, one of the things that kind of is in the Nancy Drew books is Nancy drives a blue roadster car um, because they're they're set. The original, like the yellow edition books are, are set kind of in that time frame. Um, and so anyway, so you come up to the front door and we have a phone that we get to use. Um, and we notice that there's this cat that's like carved into the concrete. Um, and then at some point we are going to have to do some pie orders because the Lilac Inn is famous for pie. So we have to send out an order shipment. Yes. So a lot of the games now include like quick tutorials on how to move around if you've never played games before. And I think that was featured on Secret of the Old Clock. Or not Secret of the Secret of Shadow Ranch. I can't remember if it's on number eleven or not because it's on remainder. So we come in. Well, hello. I'll bet my bloomers you're Nancy Drew. The 
That's right. Are you Emily's guardian? You got it. I'm Jane Willoughby. I'm Emily's guardian, but only for the next three months until she turns 18. Then she's on her own. Mmm, it smells like someone's been baking pies. Pies are the lilac in specialty. We get orders from all over. Oh, that reminds me your father called. You're supposed to call him. You can use the coin phone on the porch. Emily didn't say anything about you coming until just this morning. Is it okay that I'm here? Don't get me wrong, she can invite anybody here she wants. It's just that she's gotten so darn forgetful lately. <laughs> yeah, Jane... Jane? Looks, yeah, definitely a little rough. Maybe she's just, you know, still thinking about her mom. She misses her mom, that's for sure. So do I. Glory and me, we were best friends, you know? The two of us ran this swell little dress shop over in Capital City. But then she got hitched and I didn't. And the next thing I know, she's writing me saying it would sure take a load off her mind if I could take care of her little girl should something ever happen to her. Emily's father... Died in the war. Cantigny, I think. Anyway, I couldn't say no. I mean, what are best friends for? I just wish I knew how to help Emily. You make it sound like she's in some kind of trouble. She's been acting so... Look, go talk to her. She probably just needs to spend some time with a bear cat like you instead of some dumb Dora like me. Go on up. She's in her room. Just make like a Boy Scout and be prepared. I love all the different sayings Jane has. So before we go, well, no, I think we have to go and see Emily. So we come up here and she is this far door and I don't think you can go in any of the other doors. Um, so this is her room, very cool, like antique looking furniture. Nancy, hi, welcome to the Lilac Inn. Oh, and before I forget, thank you for that nice note you sent me when mom died. It meant a lot to me. Well, I lost my mom, too, years ago. I kind of know how you feel. You and I may not be best friends or anything, but you're still one of the nicest people I know. Oh. Well, thank you. That's why I'm hoping you'll do me a favor, a big favor. You and your dad? My dad? Helen says he's a lawyer. Shh! What's wrong? I thought I heard something. Your father has a safe, right? This is 1930. Lots of people have safes. See this jewelry? I'd like you to take it home with you and put it in your father's safe. It's beautiful. It was my mother's. The few times I saw her wear it, she looked just like a movie star. I was hiding it here in my room, but all things considered, I'd feel a lot better if you would just take it home and have your father lock it up in his safe. What do you mean, all things considered? Strange things have been going on around here. That's all I can say. I know it sounds loony, and Jane probably told you that I've been acting loony, but please do this for me. What was that? Ah! Emily, come downstairs, quick! The kitchen's on fire! Oh! Come on, we better get out of here! This is horrible, just horrible. The fire chief says the stove is completely destroyed and there's no smoke damage Lena, everywhere. She didn't fart. The inn will have to shut down for months, maybe even for good. Does he know what caused the explosion? It looked to him like one of the burners on the stove had been left on. The flame either went out or was never lit, but anyway, something made a spark, and boom. He said insurance companies are very reluctant to pay out when things look hinky, and that's when times are good. Who was in the kitchen this morning? Emily was the last person to use the stove. Like I said, she's been real forgetful lately. I think she's pretty upset. But it's not her fault. What with her mom passing away barely a month ago, and me showing up, this total stranger who doesn't know the first thing about kids or running a restaurant, and her trying to do everything all by herself. It's just too much, that's all. Who wouldn't go a little off their nut? <sighs> I better get that. The line to the regular phone got burned up in the fire, so now the only phone we got is the coin phone on the porch. Excuse me. Emily? 
This is a cutscene, so I'm not controlling anything. My mother's jewelry! It's gone! Someone must have stolen it while we were all downstairs. I knew something like this was going to happen. I just knew it! You mean this sort of thing has happened before? Yes. I mean, no. I mean, I'd rather not say. But I will say this. I did not leave the stove on. That fire was not my fault. Oh, what am I going to do? Without that jewelry, I don't have a prayer of paying for a new stove. And without a stove, I'll have to sell the inn. And if I lose the inn... I wish Mom were still here. I wish Josiah Crowley had left us the money like he always said he was going to. That's what I wish. Who's Josiah Crowley? He was this old man that lived next door. He died last year. He spent most of his time here at the inn, and he led my mom and me to believe that he'd left a lot of money for us in his will. He gave us a clock, and afterwards, he'd always point to it and get this little twinkle in his eye and say, time will tell. But when they finally found his will, he didn't leave us a penny. Maybe he didn't leave you anything because he didn't have anything. Oh, he didn't act like it, but he was rich. His estate was worth almost a quarter of a million dollars. Everything went to Richard Topham. He's this man who claims to be able to help people develop their paranormal powers. Why do you suppose Josiah left everything to him? Josiah was kind of a screwball. <laughs> One time he showed up at my birthday party dressed as my great aunt Harriet. I didn't know it was really him until two days later. Anyway, he had all these weird hobbies, and he always thought it would be really keen to read minds. Josiah invited Richard Topham to move in so Topham could help him develop his paranormal powers right there in his house. Josiah was a sweet old man, and I do miss him, and he was free to give his money to whomever he wanted. But to get our hopes up like that and then leave us nothing, it just wasn't like him. Where is Richard Topham now? He still lives in Josiah's house, which is right down the path out back. His house and the inn were built at the same time by two brothers during the Civil War. Was your mother's jewelry insured? Gosh, I forgot about that. I don't know. Jim Archer, I bet he'd know. He's our banker. I guess I should go talk to him. Not one of your favorite people, huh? Oh, no. Mr. Archer's very nice. I mean, for a stuffy old banker. I'm just so bad at business things. And Jane, my guardian, she tries hard, but she's no good at it either. Maybe you could go talk to him. Please? It would be such a big help. <laughs> sure. He runs the Main Street Bank. You can't miss it. I'll call him and tell him you're coming. How many people knew you kept your mother's jewelry in here? No one. Well, Jane, my guardian, she knew. But I didn't tell anyone else. I'll be back in a little bit. Don't forget to call your father. Okay. Emily will be 18 in a few months. So she's currently 17. Okay. So this, this place is really, really cool looking. I mean, the stained glass, the wallpaper, the woodwork, just, again, I, I love the vibes. I'd like to talk to Carson Drew. His number is KL57187. Hang on a minute. Carson Drew speaking. Hi, Dad. Well, I see you got to Titusville okay. The car ran like a top. It ought to. That's a fine car. You treat it well, it'll treat you well. I was told that you wanted me to call. I need to get some documents from a colleague over there. I thought since you were in the area, you could pick them up, save him paying postage. Sure. What's the address? He said he'd just leave them for you at the telegraph office. Just drive into town and look for Tubby Telegrams. He said you can't miss it. Will do. These papers are extremely important, Nancy. I will pick them up, Dad. Good. Remember, watch your gas gauge and get gas when you're low so you don't run out. And try to avoid potholes. The more you hit, the likely it is you'll wind up with a flat. Yes, Dad. And if you do get a flat, take it off and put on your spare, and then head straight to a gas station and get it fixed. Yes, Dad. All right, lecture over. Have you found out why Miss Crandall asked you to visit? Okay, so Alina has mentioned the Nancy Drew TV show. So, no, Tanner 
We have not solved the mystery yet. We're only like five minutes in. Okay, 15 minutes in, but still. Yes, okay, so just a, like a little pitch. So if you have cap the capability, you should definitely download the CW app and you should watch the Nancy Drew show. It's like Nancy Drew, but like for grown-ups. So it's like got some, some creepy, spooky, like almost horror vibes to it. Um, they just premiered the start of the second season yesterday. Well, Wednesday. Um, the CW always up uploads the most recent uh, show the next day. Um, yes, also, yeah. So, anyway, super, super good. Those of you that like scary shows or movies would be pretty into it. Okay. Um, she wanted me to have you lock her mother's jewelry up in your safe. Only someone stole it before I could take it with me. Stole it? Good gosh. It's a really good show. Like, I was very, very skeptical about how I was going to, uh, how I was going to enjoy it. But, like, because I'm not a scary movie person. I don't, but it's just enough that it's like, oh my gosh. But then just, like, the whole vibe of what's happening in the storyline of the show is just... Chef's kiss. Emily led me to believe a lot of strange things have been happening at the inn lately. Sounds to me like you'd be well advised to cut your visit there short. No, I want to find out what's going on. I have to find out what's going on. You have to? Well, yeah, you know, Emily just lost her mom, and she's worried about losing the inn, and her guardian's all wet when it comes to helping out, and... And the truth is... Are so curious that you feel like you'll absolutely burst if you don't find out why all these weird things have been happening. That's right? Nancy in every game. Yes. <laughs> don't worry, I know the feeling. You're a chip off the old block, I'm afraid. Well, as long as you're liking in one other way, you should be fine. What way is that? Smart? Careful. Okay. So we've had a few people join recently. Um, so we're quite we're a good few minutes into the game. So the premise of the game, we've, we're have set in a different time period. We're set in 1930. Nancy's visiting a friend whose mom uh, just passed away. And uh, Emily, the girl you're seeing, she inherits this inn uh, from her mom. And she has to kind of take care of the business and run the restaurant and all of that. And she has a guardian come stay with her who happens to be uh, her mom's friend from years ago when they were young um so you get there you're meeting with emily she wants you to um take her mom's jewelry and lock it in her dad's in your dad's safe um as kind of just a precaution um while you're having that conversation the kitchen sets on fire and somebody has stolen the jewelry in the meantime during the commotion of the fire and she's also talking about, um, <laughs> um, okay, Lena, don't spoil anything for people that actually want to watch it, okay? Um, you and I can have a conversation about it another time. Um, so Emily was also talking about a gentleman who lived next door to the family that, um, passed away recently as well, and he promised to leave them a, a bunch of money in his will. But when his will was found, he didn't. He left it all to basically, like, his psychic. Um, and so that's going to kind of play into things as well. If somebody says they're going to leave you something in their will and then doesn't, is there anything you can do about it? Not a thing. Whatever's in writing is the only thing that counts. Unless, of course, the will was tampered with or forged. And you can prove it. If not, you're out of luck. Why do you ask? Emily's neighbor, Josiah Crowley, told her and her mom that they were going to inherit part of his estate. But when he died, his will left everything to this ESP expert named Richard Topham. That's too bad, but this Crowley fellow was free to leave whatever he wanted to whomever he wanted, I'm afraid. People do change their minds, you know. I met Emily's guardian, Jane. What does a guardian do, anyway? A guardian is pretty much a surrogate parent. Jane is legally responsible. 
responsible for Emily's physical and financial well-being. Shane doesn't strike me as being the parental type. In fact, I get the impression she's in way over her head. Fortunately for her, it's not forever. Most guardianships end when the ward turns 18. Then both Jane and Emily will be free to do whatever they please. You'd think Emily's mom would have chosen somebody a little more competent to take care of her only child. Things aren't always as they appear. Maybe she's not as bad as you think. Or maybe she's worse. Don't tell me you think Emily's guardian stole the jewelry. Good grief. Where did you get such a suspicious mind? I think it was from the person who has always told me that the best way to solve a problem is to look at all the possibilities, Dad. I did say that, didn't I? <laughs> Goodbye, Dad. Bye-bye. Okay, so Carson's a lawyer, and so Nancy asked him about the whole thing with the will, um, and so he was like, nah, you can't really do anything. Um, <laughs> can't really do anything to change it once it's in writing but of course if you can prove it's been tampered with and that's a whole other story so what we want to do is we're going to go back inside and kind of take a look around kind of like in their parlor area because there's some things that we need to look at so this article in the paper here hobo sign language is becoming widespread so basically hobos or homeless people um Uh, use kind of a secret code to um, kind of keep each other informed of potential like marks to like steal from or um, places to not go or places to go and so these are kind of the th the, the signs that we want to use and figure out and, and use because uh, they they will be used uh, kind of around the game and so Right off the bat, that cat that we saw carved in uh, the concrete of the inn, a kind woman lives here. So a hobo carved that cat into the side of the inn saying, hey, this lady's nice. She probably gave, you know, some, you know, free slices of pie or something every once in a while or, you know, let them use the facilities or, you know, whatever. Okay, so here, this is, I think, the fancy clock that Emily mentioned whenever she was talking about Josiah and he left this is what he left to them so this is another slider puzzle we did one of these I feel like I've done one of these in like every game <laughs> okay so we're gonna do this and this and this and this There we go. Wonder what this mirror is doing in here. So, <laughs> I happen to print out walkthroughs that other people have have written, but basically I have a picture of the puzzle and it labels, you can't really see it very well, but it labels each piece. And um, basically, I have like a step-by-step -step of how it's supposed to go. And so I just kind of keep track of like which one is labeled which. So all that was in the clock was a mirror, um, something that we'll need at some point later in the game. And we can go ahead and play this game. This is another one of those kind of like slider puzzles. Oh, something that's... Um, <laughs> yeah. Something that's unique to this game also is we have a coin purse. 
And we actually can earn money um, by going and actually delivering telegrams. Um, and so right now we have $3.45. So every time you see the blue hand with the money, that means you have to pay something to do this particular thing. And I believe, no, okay. So basically these are all Midsummer Night's dream characters. Um, we are going to find out that um, Josiah Crowley loved Shakespeare and he particularly loved the play A Midsummer Night's Dream. And each of these characters, uh, a woman character matches with a man character based on the color of the background or the hair. Um, so blue and blue, yellow and yellow, green and green, red and red. So... I am going to do blue, green, oh crap, <laughs> I'm going to start over, I already messed up, okay, blue, yellow, so we can get yellow into position right off the bat, blue up, green up, left, and we can put green into position. Blue down. Okay, so even though we've put these guys into position, we still need to use them to kind of act as barriers. So I'm going to move um, yellow left just enough to where we can move blue up and then we can move blue into position and then we can move yellow back into position. Okay, so we're gonna put red up and red to the right. We're gonna move green to the right, red down, red over, green over. Keen. And that's all we get is just like this word. But this is for actually something really important. This is going to be something that we use to get into a secret area. Um, and so we'll need to know what do you get when you win Bard Bounce is the name of this game. And so you'll have to um, spell out the word keen. Okay. So... We are going to go out here and let's go to Josiah Crowley's house. Let's go visit um, Richard Topham. So, no, this is in my <laughs> this is in my notes. It was in my notes, the step by step. But yes, I mean the logical way to do it is use the other pieces as blocks. So, Emily said Josiah Crowley's house is um, next door, and he happens to be kind of like around the back. And when we're coming this way, we want to make sure we catch Got that it. piece of paper. Like someone recently had a key appraised. So this is kind of important. And we keep crossing and we cross this bridge. And <laughs> the top of school for the study and development of paranormal powers. Oh boy. And Nancy's just gonna walk right in. Over here, Miss Drew. Find the toy mouse and give it to Yuri, would you please? Otherwise, he'll just keep meowing. He hates strangers. Okay, so before we do anything, we have to search. So here's the cat, Yuri. We need to look around kind of underneath furniture for a small toy mouse. And I wanna say it's in a different place every time you play the game, but I'm not 100% sure. So we're gonna give the mouse to Yuri. Yuri's got some eyes going out this way. Yuri's a very weird looking cat. The the graphics on Yuri oh, yes, are not pretty. To drop by. And thank you for walking instead of parking in the driveway. I'm expecting a pupil. I'd hate for her to have to park on the road. How did you know who I was? If one is to teach others how to develop and use their paranormal gifts. It's only logical that one must possess such gifts oneself. Does that mean you can read minds or tell the future or what exactly? 
The paranormal includes telepathy or communicating by sending and receiving thoughts, extrasensory perception or perceiving that which cannot physically be seen or heard, and psychokinesis, using one's psychic energy to reshape or move objects. When I walked in just now, it looked like you were in a trance or something. I was in the process of trying to make these spoons move by using nothing but my own psychic energy. Have you ever focused sunlight through a magnifying glass until it was a minute yet searing point of light, Miss Drew? Uh, yeah, I guess. You try to burn you ants. See, that's what I do with my cerebral emanations, my thoughts. I focus them until they're a beam of pure energy which ultimately disrupts and transforms the molecular force field surrounding the target object. <laughs> Is that what you teach people in your school? How to beam their thoughts? I take them through exercises designed to help them increase their output of phantasmic energy. If you want to sign up for an introductory session, I believe I have an opening today. What I'd really like to do is talk about Josiah Crowley. Oh, I'm afraid I'm busy, young lady. Far too busy to engage in idle conversation. When would be a good time for me to come back? I'll be blunt, Miss Drew. I've discovered that the more time I spend with the, uh, shall we say, intellectually unendowed, the more my cerebral pulsations seem to diminish. Are you calling Nancy stupid? I cannot speak to you further unless and until you prove that you are worthy. That is, that your brain waves are not unacceptably inferior and thus deleterious to mine. <laughs> okay. Oh, oh, oh. I'm pulling on stuff. Whoops. Okay. Sorry, y'all. My brain waves are just fine, Mr. Topham. What I have here is an exercise in logic. If you can discern the correct solution, <laughs> then I'll know that conversing with you will do me no psychic harm. So we have to take you a may quiz. Take it with you. Good luck and good day. Okay, so in my inventory, I'm just going to solve this real quick. So I'm going to use my keyboard. And these are kind of, I guess you could call these logic puzzles. Puzzles? Puzzles? Um, so this one is all wet. That looks right. And I didn't have to push enter. All I had to do was type. And then I'm going to flip the page. And this is doll up. So doll um, is written going kind of upwards. And then double cross. Dry up. That looks right. Big cheese. Am I smart or what? And that's it. Am I to assume that you have the correct solution to that logic problem? Right here. Let's have a look. Why, you appear to have indeed found the solution. Well, since you've proved yourself to be intellectually above average, which <laughs> means talking to you should do me no harm, what would you like to talk about? Wow. I, like, I, I hate talking to this guy for obvious reasons. He's so pompous. When and how did you meet Josiah Crowley? Last summer, while on my way to the university for a conference, I stopped for a bite at the Lilac Inn. Since it was crowded and I was in a hurry, I agreed to share a table with an elderly gentleman who, like me, was by himself. As soon as I told Mr. Crowley who I was and what I did, well, he insisted that I give him a training session that very afternoon and was so thrilled with his progress that he demanded I stay and teach him everything I knew. So it was his idea that you set up your school in his house? Oh, I know rumor has it that I somehow tricked him into it, that I insinuated my way into his home, but I assure you that was not the case. Were you surprised when you found out that Josiah had left you everything? Delighted, yes. Surprised, not really. Josiah was all alone, you see, surrounded by people like the Crandalls and that banker, Jim Archer, people who were nice to him only because they knew he had money. Did you hear about the explosion and fire at the Lilac Inn this morning? I heard the explosion and fire. Ruined my nine o'clock session. So you were with a customer when it happened? Pupil. I was with a pupil. I run a school, not a vegetable stand. And yes, I was. 
until I dismissed her twenty minutes early. All the ruckus made concentration impossible. How well do you get along with Emily and her guardian, Jane? Very well, as far as I'm concerned. But as far as they're concerned, well... The fact that Josiah left everything to me made some people around here, including Emily and now this Jane Willoughby, very bitter. It hurts me, of course, but it's human nature, I suppose. Would it be okay if I looked around? Go right ahead. The place is more like a museum than a house. Josiah was a man of many, many interests. I'll be right here if you have any questions. <laughs> okay, so <laughs> right off the bat, he's not lying. Um, we was can this do... Josiah's clock? Everything in here was Josiah's. So we can go ahead and do this. This is a memory puzzle. Not like the one we have to do on Danger and, <laughs> on Danger and Deception Island. So these are all, I think, like cheeses shaped like different things. I feel like the butt. Yep. Sorry, guys. I'm getting messages from my group me. Give me one second. Turn off the vibrate. Okay. Man, Wallace and Gromit. It's a good movie. <laughs> Reese's Puss. Yeah. Yay! Oh, what's up, buddy? Oh, there it goes. Okay, another mirror. And Yuri's playing with his cat. It's a dead parrot. Putting physics to work in the modern world. A radiometer. So this is very important because we're going to come across one of these at some point. It is doubtful, however, that the movement of the veins can ever be put to such practical use for the friction needed to turn a gear would prevent the veins from spinning when exposed to light. That's what you think. Depends on what you do with the light first, pea brain. So it sounds like he's cracked it. So we're gonna pull the elephant's trunk. And it opens a little slot with As a little book. As you soon realized, Josiah's mental faculties were starting to go, I'm afraid. He tended to ramble. Very little of what he wrote in there makes sense. What are you when you win, Bard Bounce? What poet is the cat's meow? What will para my miniature golf course get you? What's Gloria's middle name? Decoder is in the r ribbit. Two to the right. So Captain's Cove, New Jersey, that's reference to game number eight, which I don't like. It's probably one of my least favorite games, but that's a reference to that one. It looks like Josiah lent a trivet to someone, but I can't make out to whom. This is just goofy. <laughs> This is real weird. I'm not gonna mess with it again. Okay, let's see. I don't 
like game number eight for several different reasons. Um, it takes place in, a, in an amusement park, which seems like it would be kind of a cool thing. But, I don't know. Without getting into too much detail about the game, I'll, I'll like save it for that game whenever I eventually do it. That'll probably be the last one I play. Just kind of, I'm going to kind of make my way back around. Um, I, the storyline, I feel like, meh. Um, the crime you're solving, meh. I don't know. Like, it's just not, it's just, there what are a lot of... These? I put them on the windshields of cars parked in the area. Great advertising. Ever put them on cars at the Lilac Inn? All the time. I've gotten quite a few pupils that way. I'm afraid that fire today was as unfortunate for me as it was for Miss Crandall. Hey. You know, I, I my goal is to play all of the games. So I, I hope that that'll happen. A jumping clown. Um, I guess we can look at, nope, and there's more of the flyers. He's got a billion of these things. Um, is there anything? Oh, yes. The man on stage in this picture, is that Josiah? Yes, that's from a production of A Midsummer Night's Dream that he directed and starred in. It closed after two nights, but he didn't care. He loved that play. noisemakers. I don't think there's anything we can look at over here. And nothing over there. So let's go outside. And Okay, we're going to go find his miniature golf course. So this guy was so rich that he put a miniature golf course on his property. Oh, a miniature golf course. Swell. So we're going to have to play mini golf and like win uh, twice in the game. Once to just play through and then once to actually like get something. So this game is interesting. This is um, somewhat of a logic puzzle. Um, basically, you're trying to guess four golf balls, the right order and the right color. So I just start by picking up some golf balls and then I press the club. And so stakes without a flag means I've got two of the balls right. One with a flag means I've got the right ball and the right color or the right ball color in the right spot. So what I'll do is I will maybe trade these and then see what happens. So two are in the right spot. So purple's in the right spot. Maybe yellow. Orange and blue, well, let's see. Okay. So all the colors are right, the order's just wrong. So those. Woohoo! That usually takes me a lot longer. Hmm, interesting. Okay. So you want to pay attention to the yellowed words. So once two, four, two, eight, two, seven. <coughs> Swallowed a little bit of spit. So that'll come into play later. But um, what we wanna do is, nope, we want to play 
And so it's going to give us a scorecard. And then we want to come here to push. And anybody can come and play for basically 10 cents. So you get a club. They shoot you out a ball. And we go play. So it gives each of the holes um, the par for what uh, we want to try to get. And this mini golf in this game is the bane of my existence. So you want to place your ball. And then you use your mouse to pull back how far. And if you pull back all the way, you're going to shoot your ball like a rocket. But if you only pull it back a little bit, maybe like this, you're only going to shoot a little bit. And then you click when you're ready to putt. So that didn't go very far. So I want to make sure an angle is everything. See, that was a little bit too much. So... I'm already over my par because the par is two. So I got four. <laughs> so I want to try to suit to salvage by getting another hole under par. And it's hard because you only have limited space for, <laughs> for how much you can move. And I think some of these have like secret areas that you can move in oh, to help give you a hole in one or help, you know, make. I hit it too hard. <laughs> Make it a little easier. Yeah, and when you're in the sand. I hit it too hard. Yeah, it was awful. I hit it too hard. There we go. Oh, this is why Yeah, I, I just don't like golf in general. Okay, so this one, it has three potential holes. Do you want to um, get it in the middle hole? Because then... This, I think, takes it to another section of this hole and gives you an automatic hole-in-one. Or maybe it's the second or the next, the following hole. I don't remember. But yeah, this cool little cutscene of like where the ball go goes if you get the middle hole. Oh no, this is part two. Yeah, and I'm, <laughs> I'm already over par. Okay. Oh, this one's awful. Okay, so I only want to hit it. Oh, crap. Okay. Okay. <laughs> the, oh, awful. And part two. Like, I hate that these have... Yeah. Yeah. Awful. <laughs> I still have one more hole. <gasps> I'm usually actually pretty decent at mini golf. I've never been like actual golfing. Hard. I would not enjoy it. Like mini golf is fun, but when you're playing computer mini golf, this sucks. That's right there. Yeah, no. <laughs> 36. <sighs> That's a rough. So you can keep playing if you want to get, because, like, you get a prize. But I'm not going to do that. Okay. <laughs> okay, we're going to go driving now. So we're going to go to the telegram office to pick up those papers for Dad. And then we're going to go to the bank to talk to the banker mm, for that Emily. Car I saw before is gone. Yes, I agree. Professional golf is awful. Like, it is very boring. Okay, so tidbits that Dad told us uh, when it comes to driving. So you see, like, over here, um, 
Blenheim Nursery in their little roundabout, there's a pothole. There's oil slicks. Um, so we want to avoid things like that. And also our gas gauge is down here in the bottom right hand or left hand corner. Um, and if, you know, we get into the red, we need to make our way to the gas station and a, and a guy will fill us up. And then we also have a spare tire um, that if we do hit too many potholes and we blow a flat, then um, we can change it and then take it to the gas station. They'll repair it for us. So to just basically move, you just click and hold. Um, and, you know, you just move your mouse and, you know, you kind of steer yourself that way. So I want to avoid that pothole, so I move out of the way. And that's the bank. Um, what's my other stubby telly brands? Okay, so then when you get here, you click, I believe. Oh, space for to park. Something I can Duh. do for you? Well, my name's Nancy Drew, and my father Say said Say no that more. You're here to pick up some papers. They're in that envelope. Thank you. You're welcome. Say, is that your roadster out there? Yes, it is. Did I park somewhere I shouldn't have? No, no, it's just that my regular driver never showed up today, so I've got no way to deliver all these telegrams. How would you like to earn some extra cash? You mean you want me to deliver them for you? You've got a car, you're trustworthy, or at least your father thinks you are, so what do you say? I'll pay you 25 cents each time you complete a delivery. And you might even get some tips. Okay, sure. Great, you're hired. Here, <laughs> deliver this to Seymour out at Blenheim Nursery. So we can Come do that when whenever we go back. Telegram to deliver. Great. When we go back See to while again. While. Or if we want, we can just go and deliver, deliver a bunch of telegrams. But I'm going to go to the bank. Hello, I'm looking for Jim Archer. Right through that door. Hello, are you Nancy Drew? Yes, are you Mr. Archer? Mr. Archer. Yes, ma'am. Jim a Archer. Weird. I'm founder, president, manager, and just about everything else you can name when it comes to this fine enterprise. I hear that some businesses aren't doing so well these days. Ever since the stock market crashed, one business after another has closed, including banks. President Hoover keeps saying that a recovery is just around the corner, but you have to wonder. Is your bank doing okay? I'm happy to report that we're doing just fine, thank you. Excuse me. Main Street Bank, Jim Archer speaking. No, I don't. Thanks. I'm sorry, but... Yes, I know, but... All right, then just bring it by. Sorry for the interruption. How can I help you? Do you happen to know whether the jewelry Emily inherited from her mother was insured? I know for a fact that it was not. Why? Because someone snuck into the inn today and stole it. Oh, no. I heard there'd been a fire in the kitchen, but when it rains, it pours, doesn't it? I told Gloria not to let that policy lapse. Did Gloria always rely on you for business advice? Sometimes. You see, I have experience in the law as well as accounting. But in this case, she wouldn't listen to me. She felt that since Josiah Crowley would be leaving her a large sum of money when he died, or so she thought, paying to insure her jewelry just wasn't necessary. How well did you know Josiah Crowley? Well enough for him to name me executor of his will. An executor is the person who makes sure the terms of a will are carried out. <laughs> Why do you think he wound up leaving Gloria nothing? I have no idea. Truth be told, he'd given me the impression that I would be well taken care of when he passed on too. But when I finally read his will, it all went to top him. Where did Josiah keep his will? He'd hidden it in a chest of drawers in his house. It took me months to find it. When he named me executor, he said he'd tell me where it was hidden when the time was right. Whatever that meant. Yeah, this, like, <laughs> this guy's kind of boring, too. Yeah, no one wants to listen to him. Okay. The yeah. will you found in Josiah's house, is it possible that Josiah didn't really write it? Well, the thought that it could be a forgery did cross my mind. 
But an expert verified that the will had been typed on Josiah's typewriter and signed in Josiah's hand. But Richard Topham lived in Josiah's house. He had access to his typewriter, and he could have copied his signature. As far as the law is concerned, the matter is closed, Miss Drew. But it's possible that Josiah's real will is still out there. Are you sure he never gave you any clue as to where he'd hidden his will? Whenever I asked him, he said he'd tell me when the time is right. Although, he got a safe deposit box here about three years ago. Maybe that's where his real will is. Topham has tried to claim its contents, but he can't find the key. Maybe he knows the real will could be in there, only he wants to destroy it. Now, Miss Drew, I wouldn't go jumping to any conclusions. How did Josiah die? He was sitting in the public library reading when apparently his heart just decided it was time to stop. What was he reading? His favorite book, The Makeup Secrets of Lon Chaney. How well do you know Jane Willoughby? You know, Emily's guardian? Not well at all. Met her once or twice. Seemed a little flighty. What was Emily's mom like? Had a good head on her shoulders. Friendly, too. Having a big slice of blueberry pie at the lilacan was always a real treat. It'd be nice if family could carry on the tradition, but times are just too tough. If she's smart, she'll sell before the bills start piling up. I guess I'll be going. Nice talking to you. Okay, so we can look at a few things in his office. Don't you ever use this typewriter? That used to be Josiah Crowley's. It was the only thing he left me in his will. Naturally, it doesn't work. The keys always jam. October 9, 1929. Dear Mrs. Sheldon, here is the trivet I said you could borrow for your party at Twin Elms. Please take care of it because I will want it back someday. Your friend, Josiah C. So that's I the... I Josiah ever got his trivet back. So typewriters with their their ink ribbons would actually keep track of what you typed so we found a note in his little book back at his house that um had a message of like who borrowed it um but the the note was like all smeared over Clara Pickford is this lonely old woman who comes in here every once in a while. Took a shine to me for some reason. Insisted on giving me that picture. To Jim Archer, my ace in the hole. Ace in the hole is a golf reference. Where did you get this clock? Josiah Crowley gave it to me. It stopped keeping time the minute he walked out the door. That receipt I found outside the inn. I wonder if the key it refers to is the one to this clock. So this is where the safety deposit boxes is are. Is this your car? Yes, it is. Bought and paid for. So his car was at the inn whenever um, Nancy first showed up. Okay. I want to go to Waddell Jewelry because that note that we found flying Hello, around are you Mr. Waddell? mentions so a key. I found this receipt, and I just wondered what you could tell me about it. Let me see that one key. Every retail value, item 493. Oh, yeah. This was for that key Jim Archer wanted me to appraise. Jim Archer wanted you to appraise a key? It was very ornate. Had jewels all over it. Fake jewels, as it turned out. When I told him it was worthless, the cheapskate refused to pay me and told me to keep it. Do you think I could have it? Sure. Once you pay the appraisal fee... Which is... A dollar and fifty cents. <sighs> Here you go. Good. Here's the key. Enjoy. Cool. Um... Oh, let's go deliver the telegram. Blenheim Nursery. Oh, oh, oh. Hello, I've got a telegram for Seymour. Just leave it on the desk there. I'd uh, tip you, but as you can see, my hands are filthy. What are you doing? I'm trying to doll up some of my plants before this guy named Mr. Martin comes in. He's a big cheese at some oil company, and I'm hoping he... Ah! Did that plant just bite you? It did kind of feel that way. I think I'll be going now. Bye. <laughs> so then let's go back to the inn. 
And then when we're ready to go get a new telegram, and so we remember who and where, um, we can go back to the telegram office and he'll tell us and he'll pay us. Um, okay. Oh, wait. Actually. I want to go back to the bank and I want to see if that key works on that clock. There's no music on right now. That's kind of sad. And I think the potholes change every time you drive. Or can change every time you drive. Which is crappy because you're like you get used to. It sure be nice to be able to the... open this thing. Oh, nope. I guess not. <laughs> Before I fool around with this, I should make sure it's oh. okay with Mr. Archer. I guess that's true. You know, the minute you walked out of here, something occurred to me. You're Carson Drew's daughter, aren't you? <laughs> Guilty. We went to law school together. Only he actually went into law, and I wound up here. So how's he doing? Business pretty good? Great. Couldn't be better. That's nice. That's real nice. Well, you tell him you saw me, and you tell him I'm doing just fine, too. So what can I do for you? Was that your car I saw parked near the Lilac Inn this morning? I haven't been there in months. You saw someone else's car. It's a very popular make and color, you know. Whose ever car it was, it wasn't there after the fire. Probably just someone sneaking onto that miniature golf course that Josiah built back there. Or bootleggers. I hear they frequent that area, too. The key that you had Mr. Waddell appraised. Could that be the key to the clock that Josiah Crowley gave you? It might have been, I suppose. You know about that? I found the receipt on the path to Richard Topham's house. Really? I thought I'd thrown it out. You see, when he told me the key was worthless, I lost all interest in it. So, it would be all right if I kept the key for myself? I have no use for it. In fact, if you want that old clock, you can have it, too. You, you don't take it with you, but you can use going. it anytime. Nice talking to you. Okay, so now we have permission to mess with the clock. I'm a mess with the clock. Gears! Okay. So you want to put... And the really frustrating thing... Is it grabs it in the middle so you can't really see... Oh, wait. Because <laughs> then that could destroy everything. Okay, so you want to find the gears that have... Okay, and once it's the right gear, it's in place. So they have these little, like, tick marks on the side. And it, dep like, it very much depends what gear you put where. Because it may be a large gear, but do you have the right tick marks? Because each gear has, like, different tick marks. So this one... And I think it has to do with like which direction it's going to make the gears next to it turn. Like you have to connect them all. So I'm just basically making the line connect. So I need a smaller gear that's going to connect here. I need a bigger gear to connect to that medium and then I need and the end yay another mirror so mirrors are a thing okay now let's go back to lilac -in. Very fun, like, old music. I dig it. And park space bar. Okay. <sighs> Let's go 
talk to Emily and look around Emily's room. Because there's something I think we need to see. <laughs> okay, so this guy, Omar, this poet is the cat's meow. So that's another clue we need for a puzzle. Hi, Nancy. Did Josiah ever say anything about hiding his will somewhere? No, but he was always hiding stuff. I know because he was always writing reminders to himself about how to find it. But whenever the subject of his will came up, he'd just say he was happy knowing we were going to be happy when he passed on. Time will tell. That's all he'd say. What was your mother's middle name? Lois. Why? Oh, just curious. Do you play much miniature golf on the course that's out back? Not anymore. When I was little, I used to play with Josiah. Sometimes he'd help me get par just so I could get something from the prize machine. You could win different things? You always won the same thing, just a different color. It was a, a little toy dog or something. Very cheaply made and quite forgettable, obviously. It's actually a pony, but I th and I think we actually have to win miniature golf in order to be able to do the puzzle that we have to, okay. <sighs> is the clock in the parlor the one Josiah gave you? Yes. I don't know why he gave it to us. It's never worked, and nobody can open it to find out why. Okay. Nancy solved it in super quick time. Y'all must be stupid. Do you have any idea where Josiah may have hidden a safe deposit box key? He could have hidden it anywhere. He always said his favorite hiding place was right under people's noses. <laughs> I'll be back Dog, in a pony, bit. same difference. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Let's go play mini golf. Mm, yeah, let me check my my fundage. Oh no. that I can play mini golf again and actually get par because I'm not very good. Okay. So I got that one. Okay. No! It's all a matter of like geometry and angles. Which I prefer geometry to algebra. I hit it too hard. No, no, no. I hit it too hard. Oh, that's too Fine. There we go. Goodness. Ah! Ah! Give me shapes all day long. Formulas, not so much. I cry. That par. Oh, I hit the corner. Ooh, saved. That was too much. 
<laughs> oh! No! That failure. And of course, this is a part two. Eight. And I've gone over stupid par. Seriously. I hit it too hard. Okay, I'm actually going to put the scorecard here. Alright, we're going to play again. Because I need to know that I win a pony, not a dog. That's a big difference. Oh! <laughs> no! Oh, but I still got it in two! Woo! Okay. Stupid fantasy fairway. I like the cool butterfly on the left, but that's about it. I dig the music. I guess that's true. If the dog is a Great Dane, it's pretty close to a pony. Ha! I got that part too. Ooh. No! <laughs> Shoot pull. As Buddy the Elf would say, son of a nutcracker. Yes, very cantina. Yes. Oh, I don't want that one. Dang it. And this is what happens when you don't. Okay. I still got it in four, but whatever. Okay. 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 Shh, don't jinx it. Shh, don't jinx it. No. I hit it too hard. <laughs> <laughs> By two. I'm supposed to put my scorecard in here when I'm done. Okay. One more time. Okay. Oh, my nose itches. Okay. I got that one under par. Oh! Oh! <coughs> okay, we're just gonna. I hit it too. No! Twenty-seven. I 
hit it too hard. Okay, so the thing about it, though, is some of the games take longer because, like, the past few games that I've played, I've had oh, I've had a game each time that's purely on, like, chance. So, like, with this game, it may not take us that, that long, but I do expect it would take us over, like, two hours. Because we're about an hour and 15 in, I think. I hit it too hard. <laughs> oh, horse feather. Ah! Oh! No. Looks like I'm supposed to put my scorecard in here when I'm done. Y'all. I mean, there's strategy to this, obviously, but like. Oh my gosh. <laughs> and I'm like stuck where I can't even like move it. Oh. <laughs> I'm going to get like 40 something. This is so dumb. Nine. Oh, my Lanta. That was totally in. But this time, I didn't go in the sand. Dang it! My cat's up there. What is she doing? Weirdo. Okay. I'm already over par. Ugh. Well, we know one thing you have to know about this time period, so the 1930s, is they had some funky sayings. I hit it too hard. Like, they'd be laughing at how we say, like, oh, I'm just straight vibing, or whatever. Missed it. <laughs> like, they said things like, oh, he's the bee's knees and the cat's pajamas. I gotta make sure I'm not... Okay, good. But yeah, so they had some funny sayings, too. But, anyway, okay. Oh! Yes. No! <laughs> Yeah, I don't know what horse feathers means. Holy Moses. I'm gonna get like 10. I hit it too hard. Okay. Ah! Well, it's gonna be like 14. 11. Close. Okay. Pardon the burp. 
Blue light glasses on. Because staring at a screen all day. <laughs> oh, Lena, I like that theory. That's good. Butt hairs. <laughs> oh, that's a good one. Oh, that's good. <laughs> Please do. And tell me where it originates because. Oh. Oh, come on. Oh, poor Stella. Yeah, I know. All right, y'all. I take that as a compliment that I laugh just like my cousin, who everyone mistakes that we're sisters. Oh! He thought I was you. <laughs> I mean, he's not wrong. I almost thought that didn't go in. My hands still smell like my dinner. I had like, um, almost like pulled pork tacos. My hands smell like the onion and cilantro. Oh, you found the answer? <gasps> Horse feathers? Or dog butt furs being called feathers? Oh, shoot. Okay, y'all. Come on. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, son of a nutcracker. No. <laughs> uh, oh, it's very close. Yes, I need to know what horse feathers, um, the origin of it is.
Lena, you're not supposed to know those words. <laughs> um, if your mom asks, it wasn't me. <laughs> no. Oh. Okay. I hit it too hard. <gasps> I hit it too hard that time. There we go. Yes! We did it. We did it. We did it. We did it. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. I got a pony, not a horse, a pony, a four letter word. Okay. <laughs> it's the name of research. Okay, so we're gonna go this way and we see this lovely carriage house. Okay, so in Josiah's little book that we read in the elephant compartment thing, what are you when you win Bard Bounce? Is keen. So we got one question right. No, not a great Dana pony. Okay, what poet is the cat's meow? We spell out Omar. And I like this because the letters don't change all around you. Okay. What will par on my miniature golf course get you? Pony. Not Dane. Pony. And then Gloria's middle name. So Gloria was Emily's mom. It's Lois. Yay! So we got in to Josiah's secret workshop. Are we going to see freshwater fish of the Midwest? And this is cool because we do have to go fishing at some point. Boggart's Pond fish. So this, we're going to go fishing at Boggart's Pond. Um, I think we have to catch... <sighs> Is it a catfish? No, what do we have to catch? A largemouth bass. So the note that we need to remember, largemouth bass like grass beds and they like minnows as bait. So what we do when we go fish is we use a minnow as a bait and we fish in the weeds, basically. Um, so you take notes uh, going back to... So, hang on. I'll, I'll go show you really quickly. So to answer the question of... What do we, how do we know the answer to those questions? Hello, Mr. Topham. Go away. Okay, so we come here to his Is little- Is it okay if I look around? Certainly. To his little elephant. And these questions here, what are you when you win bar of bounce? So that game in the parlor of the Lilac Inn, you're keen. Uh, what is like the best poet? Um, that book on Emily's bed, Omar such and such. What will par get you on my mini golf course? A pony. And then Gloria's middle name was Lois. And so I asked Emily what her mom's middle name was. So I just made note of that. And then so I was able to type in or rotate all of those letter 
tumblers to spell out those words and then it opened that carriage house lock. So I'm gonna go back. Yes, you're welcome. So yes, and all I have to do is click the diamond and it lets me back in. I don't have to spell it out each time, which is lovely. So yes, so nothing really else we can look at, but we can look at this clock. So this clock goes back to that um, puzzle we found at the golf course, that little one, that logic puzzle I did first, those um, numbers from that poem. Okay, yes, so once, so we turn the clock to be in the one position and we click this blue button up here. Two. Four. Two. And this is just basically a carbon copy of that poem. And I'm just going off of the highlights. Two. Eight. Two, seven. Yay! And I got another mirror. Okay, so if we, uh, oh, before we do this, we do need to place all of our mirrors that we have gotten. So in each corner, I wonder what goes here. We are going to place a mirror. <laughs> you don't have to print. Um, Lena, you can actually just Google each game's name and then walk through. So like Secret of the Old Clock walkthrough. And I always go by the first one that pops up on Google. It's usually um, the website from Game Boomers. And somebody has written a walkthrough, like step-by-step, 100% step, completely done for you. And like literally that's where I got this walkthrough was Game Boomers. Um, and I like reprinted everything. I got it all in a binder. Cause I like to be able to like look at pages and if I want to make additional written notes, I can. Okay. This puzzle Yes, we are going to turn eventually the mirrors to reflect light. But in order to get this activated so we can pull this lever, we need to line up the dominoes. <clears throat> so we need to find, um, that is seven, and we can right click to rotate. Oops. And then we want four. So hopefully you know how dominoes work. You basically just make the ends match. And I have to move them each time because you can accidentally cover dominoes. And I did that like my first thing. And just make sure everything's matching up and then make sure you have end to end. And then it um, opens it up and you can pull it. Let's light in. I need to adjust the mirror so that the light hits them just right. So, what we want to do is, let's see. So, I'm just clicking and holding until the light hits where exactly where I want it to hit. And you want to hit that light bulb at the end. And there was a book in Josiah's house that talked about this specific device. And he was like, ha, ha, shows what you know. 
and he made it work, where it ends up opening this secret loft area. Super cool. So we're going to go up here and we find a ham radio. So we need a Krollmeister crystal. And uh, Waddell cut it to fit and we have to put it in here. And then we have this, forget where you put L-W-A-T, Marcel's band, you old coot. So we have to figure out who Marcel is and what L-W-A-T is. I've seen these symbols before. They were in that newspaper story about hobos. So these hobo symbols that, that signify different things like warnings or like, hey, go here. And then flute it, and Thisbe, Pyramus are characters in A Midsummer Night's Dream. All right, guys, I'm going to step out and use the restroom very, very quickly. I will be right back. Just hang tight for me. Actually, my husband locked me in here. <laughs> we have to keep like baby locks on our office doors so our cats don't get in here and mess with cords and things. I shouldn't have drank all that water. But anyway, while I'm waiting, so we have, we have a baby lock on both sides of the door and my husband locked me in. <laughs> okay, um, we can leave. Okay, yay. <laughs> Give me one second, I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. This time I'm locking myself in. Okay. Yay! Okay, I'm all better. So, I actually don't think that those letters get rearranged at all, like it's code for something. Okay, let's go back and talk to Mr. Topham because we need his copy of A Midsummer Night's Dream. Uh, true. Hi, Mr. Topham. And it no, happens to be right next to him. Do you by any chance know who Marcel is? Marcel was what Josiah called his favorite hat. His hat? The man named his hat? <laughs> he loved that hat, so to him, naming it made perfect sense. Uh, yes. Lena, uh, what are your questions? Do you still have Marcel? 
No, as a matter of fact, I gave that hat to Gloria Crandall. She said she was fond of the old fellow and wanted something to remember him by. Although I suspect the real reason she wanted that hat was to see if he'd stashed any money in it. Josiah ordered something from the Krollmeister Crystal Company just before he passed away. Do you know if it ever arrived? You must be talking about that chunk of quartz that came last winter. I still have it right here. Why? I was wondering if I could buy it from you. For my father. He loves quartz. Perhaps we can work something out. You see, amazing as this is going to sound, I am able to project my thoughts into another person's brain. Lena, you know, whenever you're ready for um, asking a question. Oh. Have you ever solved a game without any help? Or do you <laughs> watch a lot? Um, yes, I, well... Yeah, there have been a few times where I've played games with, like, no walkthrough at all. Um, the cool thing, though, is in more recent games, they actually have a feature in-game where you can't... If you, if you play on Junior Detective, I think, you can get hints, like, in the actual game itself so you don't have to go out and look for hints and walkthroughs like on the internet you can just like do it in game so that's super cool and I feel like I did that with the most recent game that came out um yeah and there have been a few other times where I've I've played games without the walkthroughs um and I just use purely just my notes that I took um but yeah and then what's your other question is that so the only problem is, not everyone has the intellectual capacity to receive my thoughts. But since you have already demonstrated a high level of intelligence, yes, you may very well be the ideal subject. Subject? As in, experiment? You are going to help me prove that I am telepathic. Here's what we're going to do. I'm going to shuffle a deck which contains five sets of these cards. Then I'm going to turn my back, draw a card, look at it, and start transmitting my thoughts. When you receive my thoughts, you will identify the card I'm looking at. Once you correctly identify five cards in a row, I'll give you that piece of quartz. But what if I can't do it? Just stay focused on the cards and my superior brain power will do the rest. Very well, let's begin. Tell me, what card is this? Okay. Every time he asks a question, it's a different phrasing, and each phrase corresponds to a different shape. So he's kind of cheating the system. So what card is this is the three wavy this lines. Way. That's not right. Oh. Here's another. What card am I looking at? Oh, hang on. Oh, is it different each time? Oh. Hang on. This one? Marvelous. Here's Weird. Another. What card is this? Oh. This one? Wrong. Here's another. What card is this? This one. Wrong. Here's another. Which card am I thinking of? I think it's this one. Wrong. Well, you failed to correctly identify five in a row. Shall we continue? You bet. Ready when you are. Very well. So Let's it makes begin. me wonder if this is... What card am I holding? This one. Marvelous. Here's another. What card am I thinking about? I think it's this one. Excellent. Here's another. This is which card? This one. Incorrect. You must focus. Here's another. What card am I concentrating on? This one? Yes. Here's another. This is which card? This one. Very good. Oh my gosh. Whenever he picks up a particular card, he always says the same thing. Well, he failed to correctly identify five in a row. Shall we continue? You bet. Ready when you are. Very well. Let's begin. 
Which card am I thinking of? This one. Incorrect. You must focus. Here's another. What card am I thinking about? This one. Excellent. Here's another. What card am I looking at? This one. Yes. Here's another. What card is this? This one. Wrong. Here's another. Which card am I thinking of? This one? Very good. Well, you failed to correctly identify five in a row. Shall we continue? You bet. Ready when you are. Very well. Let's begin. What card am I thinking about? Star. This one. Very good. Here's another. What card am I holding? Square. This one. Very good. Here's another. What card am I concentrating on? I think it's this one. Very good. Here's another. What card am I holding? I think it's this one. You go, girl. Here's another. Which card am I thinking of? This one? Very good. You did it. Well, actually, I did it. But in any case, thank you for your assistance. Here's the piece of crystal that Josiah ordered. Take it. You've earned it. Well, actually, I earned it, but let's not quibble. But, Mr. Topham, I didn't really... I mean, you didn't really... I mean, I'm afraid that subconsciously you may have... <sighs> yes? Never mind. Do you need anything else? What do you think happened to the key to Josiah's safe deposit box? Josiah no doubt lost it. He had a terrible memory, poor fellow. What do you think is in the safe deposit box? No doubt it's filled with the same thing as this house. Junk. But if it's junk, why haven't I gotten rid of it, you may well ask. Well, I know it's silly to hang on to Josiah's things, but he was a wonderful man, you see. And I just don't have the heart to get rid of them. Too sentimental for my own good, I guess. Do you mind if I look around some more? Be my guest. Okay, actually, we don't know that we need that book yet, but we eventually do need it. Okay. Let's go back to the inn, and then we'll go driving. So, is Emily all right? Someone stole her mother's jewelry. What? Did you happen to see anyone go upstairs during all the commotion that the fire caused? No. You mean someone stole it while everybody was rushing around trying to put out the fire? Hypers! You can't trust a fireman. Who can you trust? Are you sure no one besides you and Emily was in the kitchen this morning? Positive. Well, I suppose someone could have snuck in the back door. Are you saying someone caused that fire on purpose? To distract us? It's possible, don't you think? But I'm the only one who knew she had that jewelry. Well, it's not quite true. When Gloria was alive, she could have told people about it, or people may have seen her wearing it. And when she died, they knew the jewelry had to be around here somewhere, right? Does anyone in particular come to mind? Sorry, it's been hard enough getting to know Emily, let alone anyone else in this backwater burg. Well, guess better go call the sheriff. Have you met Richard Topham? <laughs> yeah, I've had the displeasure of meeting that quack. You don't think he can help people develop their psychic powers? The only thing he's good at is separating little old ladies and dim-witted rubes from their hard-earned cash. In fact, he came over while they were putting out the fire today, asked me who you were, and I was so frazzled at the time I told him. I don't usually give that crackpot the time of day. Josiah Crowley seemed to think he was legit. Like that circus fella said, there's a sucker born every minute. Me? I think ESP is a lot of J-U-N-K. Where did that barred bounce game that's in the parlor come from? Do you know? Emily says Josiah Crowley brought it in one day and just left it. Said it was so guests, as in him, would have something to do while they waited for a table. Does the miniature golf course that's out back belong to the inn? No, that was Josiah Crowley's. Way I hear, he built it himself. Was it open to the public? Nope, it was just his own private little course. Can you imagine? Wish I had money to throw around like that. Well, I'll talk to you later. You betcha. Hi, Nana. 
Nancy? Would you happen to know where your mother put Josiah's favorite hat? Look in the drawer right below me. That's where all mom's mementos are. I'll be back in a little bit. Okay. Maybe this is the key to Josiah's safe deposit box. You don't need to look at everything in there, do you? Sorry. Oh, we eventually have to use the sewing machine. That is probably one of the worst, like, minigame activities that you have to do ever. And you'll see why in a little bit. So, I'm going to go to telegrams. Then I think I'm going to go by the jewelers and then i'm gonna go by the bank or i'm gonna go by the jewelers then the uh whatever's first so waddell jewelry we'll Hello, have him Mr. cut Waddell. the cork now what i need for you to cut a blank from this piece of cork no big deal let's see it the blank needs to be just like the one you made before for josiah crowley like i said no big deal you're gonna have to cough up two dollars though you can pay me when you pick it up good day so when we go and pick it up, we're going to need to pay him money. So let's go. Tubby telegrams. Did you deliver that telegram? I sure did. Good for you. Here's your money. And here's your next telegram. Take this to Counselor Alice out at Camp Avondale. Keep up the good work. Okay. So we can do that now. We can just run a few telegrams. So. Um. That's to the observatory up here. I've got a telegram for a counselor here named Alice. That's me. Hang on. Auto tight up, Jason. <laughs> what a jokester. Anyway, thanks. I'm afraid I don't have any money to tip you. That's okay. Have a swell day. Oh, yeah, yeah. Are you talking about like guardianship? Yeah. So remember, we need to keep an eye on our gas gauge. Did you deliver that telegram? I sure did. Good for you. Here's your money. And here's your next telegram. Deliver this to Mr. Jones at Dash's Dairy. Keep up the good work. I feel like that's somewhere this way. That's a cow on the road. So we can't go that way. Hello, I need to deliver this telegram to Mr. Jones. That's me, thanks. You can tell me I'm all wet, but I don't have any money to tip you with. Wait a minute. Here, how about a nice fresh glass of milk? Uh, no, thank you. Bye. Not so much money. Oh, so let's do... Did you deliver that telegram? I sure did. Good for you. Here's your money. And here's your next telegram. This one goes to Miss Ross at Sunnybrook Farm. Keep up the good work. Yeah, nobody's tipping. All right. Let's go to the bank. Hello again. I think I found the key to Josiah's safe deposit box. 
Really? I have it right here. It is from this bank. May I see if it opens the box? It takes two keys to open a safe deposit box. The owner's key and my key. And in this case, I'm under no obligation to open it for you. Oh, but I... However, were you to do me a small favor... <sighs> sure. I hired a seamstress to make a dress for my wife's birthday next week. Unfortunately, the seamstress and I had a falling out. And now I need to find someone to finish the dress. Just hire a new seamstress. Well, the fact of the matter is, the dressmaker quit because I couldn't pay her. I misled you before. Business is not fine. This bank is on the brink of ruin. <sighs> oh, I'm sorry to hear that, Mr. Archer. He's balding right I now. wanted to get my wife something nice because, well, it might be the last nice thing she gets for a long, long time. Now, Emily once mentioned that Jane used to be a dressmaker. Say no more. Just give me the dress and I'll take care of it. I have it right here. The seamstress said that all the pieces have been cut out and basted together. All that's needed is a sewing machine. When it's finished, bring it back and I'll let you try that key in Josiah's safe deposit box. What's your opinion of Richard Topham? Interesting gentleman who's in an interesting line of work. Does he do business here? Yes, he does. Jane thinks he's a crackpot. He makes a living doing whatever it is he does. So obviously someone thinks he's the real deal. I guess I'll be going. Say hi to Carson for me. Hello, Mr. Waddell. Are you done making that blank? Have you got my fee? No. Good day. Wait. Ah! Crap. I gotta earn more monies. Oh, wait. Oh, Miss Ross at Sunnybrook Farm. Okay, there we go. I've only got half a tank of gas left. I should gas up before I forget. All right, let's go to the bees. Welcome to Zippy's, where zipless service is zippily zap and zippy service is the zippiest. Fill her up. Just 50 cents worth, please. That'll be 50 cents. Here you go. Thank you, miss. Anything else? <laughs> no, thank you. Drive zippily. All right. Let's go this way. Hi, I have a telegram from Miss Ross. My name's Rebecca. And I'm only 10, but I'll deliver it to her for you, I promise. I won't let you down or double-cross you or anything like that. Well, okay. Thank you, Rebecca. No sweat. <laughs> I mean, you're welcome. Like, that's very, very creepy sounding little kid. Did you deliver that telegram? I sure did. Good for you. Here's your money. And here's your next telegram. <laughs> deliver this to Dr. Bob out at the observatory. Keep up the good work. Dr. Bob? Oh, nope. Whoops. all the way around the observatory. I'm supposed to deliver this telegram to Dr. Bob. 
That would be me. Thank you. Wow, that's a big telescope. Come back after dark and I'll let you take a look. You can consider it your tip. I may just do that. Bye-bye. Did you deliver that telegram? I sure did. Good for you. Here's your money. And here's your next telegram. Deliver this to Miss Temple at Lowood Academy. Keep up the good work. Wait. Lowood Academy. Okay. That was over here, I think. Hello, I've got a telegram for Miss Temple. I am she. We teachers don't get paid much, you know. I understand. Uh, did this by any chance used to be the Brewster Academy? Why, yes it did. Thought so. Bye. You deliver that telegram? I sure did. Good for you. Here's your money. Yes, I'm and having fun. Telegram. This one goes to Dr. Ackerman out at the Deer Mountain Resort. Keep up the good work. And I can look at my map. Deer Mountain Resort's up here. Hello, I'm delivering a telegram to Dr. Ackerman. I shall deliver it to the good doctor forthwith. He rarely tips, and I never do. That's okay. Bye. Did you deliver that telegram? I sure did. Good for you. Here's your money. And here's your next telegram. This one's for old man Johnson out at his farm. Keep up the good work. Okay. <laughs> Hello, Mr. Waddell. Are you done making that blank? Have you got my fee? Right here. Good. Here's the blank I cut for you. Enjoy. When Lena was just a small babe. Or she was not even thought of yet. <sighs> okay. I don't think. Oh, I need to go do the dress. Oh, Jane! So a dress for me.
because I don't want to do it. Oh, Nancy, I'm afraid there's been more trouble. Trouble? It's Emily. She... Oh, this is silly. I'm her guardian. I should just make her sell this place. She's only 17, for Pete's sakes. She should be out meeting boys and going to parties, not trying to run a business. Miss Willoughby, what happened? Just go ask her and make her tell you everything. Jane told you, didn't she? Not really. That picture on the wall over there? I saw it move. I was just sitting here and it moved all by itself. I saw it move. I really did. Last week, a book fell off the shelf for no reason. And before that, I heard these weird noises. And almost every day I hear a voice, like a whisper, coming out of nowhere. Jane thinks it's nerves, but I... I don't want to talk about this. Did you see Jim Archer? I'm afraid I don't have very good news. The jewelry wasn't insured? Your mom dropped the insurance in order to save money for... Shh! Did you hear that? Hear what? Shh! Nothing. I'm going to have to sell the inn, aren't I? You know, it's possible, just possible, that the will that was found was not the will Josiah wrote. You mean, he may have left us money after all? No, that's wishful thinking. And I refuse to get my hopes up again because they'll probably just get dashed again. Listen, I feel bad enough that you drove all the way out here for nothing. Maybe you should just go home. Would you mind if I stayed for a while? No, but I really don't feel like being sociable right now. There's nothing for you to do. I'd like to see if Josiah hid a second will somewhere. <laughs> what are you? Some kind of Sam Spade? Well, just because I've never solved a mystery before doesn't mean I can't. Anyway, there's no harm in trying, right? Who knows? I might turn out to be good at it. Be my guest. I'll be back in a little bit. You're the bee's knees. Hey, there's one of the phrases I mentioned earlier. Poor kitchen. So, what did Emily say? Did she tell you about the pictures and the voices? Have you ever seen or heard anything strange around here? No. In fact, this place is so quiet and dull compared to Chicago that it's a wonder I haven't lost my mind. You know what? I'll bet it's me. I'll bet it finally hit Emily that I'm just not Gloria and I never will be and that running this place is always going to be all up to her. And it was just more than her poor mind could bear. I'd like to kind of look around. Is that okay with you? You betcha. And keep an eye out for those jewels. The sheriff's not going to investigate. He said since nobody got robbed at gunpoint or anything, coming out here again just didn't seem necessary. Said it sounded to him like the jewelry had just been misplaced. You see, I... Well, it only felt fair to tell him about Emily's, you know, delicate state of mind. Since you used to be a dressmaker, do you think you could help me sew something? Me? Sew? <laughs> no, I can't. Sewing takes practice, and I haven't sewed a stitch in years. Whatever it is, believe me, I'd wreck it. Then how about giving me some pointers? Uh-uh, no can do. Sorry. Well, I'll talk to you later. Don't take any wooden nickels. Is this your sewing machine? Actually, that belonged to my mom. She and Jane used to be dressmakers. Mom was going to teach me how to use it, but she... she never got the chance. Would it be all right if I used your sewing machine? Go right ahead, but remember, you're on your own. Okay. <gasps> There's no needle. It's probably in the box with the rest of Mom's sewing stuff. Ask Jane if she knows where it is. Not yet. What's cooking? Would you happen to know where the needle for the sewing machine in Emily's room is? 
I moved all of Glory's sewing things out of there and put them in a little box. Look, I'm supposed to get the pies we baked before all the hullabaloo this morning ready for the delivery man. They gotta be put in the shipping container just so or he casts a kitten. <laughs> this is how he wants them organized. Now why don't you go out on the porch and get those pies ready to go while I look for that sewing box? Sounds good. Okay, we gotta go organize the pie. Okay. So we open this sheet and we look at the pie order. Okay, so two sand gate. They want two large cherries, one blueberry, one chocolate. Riverville wants one small and one large blue, one small, one large chocolate, and two large pies. Probably cherry. So cherry column blueberry column chocolate column this is just like the puzzle we basically did in um secret of shadow ranch where we have where it's like we have the columns of what needs how it needs to be divided the sizes and all of that so what i like to do is i just like to put you know ch like cherry in the cherry column Blueberry in the blueberry column, chocolate in the chocolate column, you know, just get it sorted that way first. And then, um, go from there. Okay. So I'm going based off of just the order sheet. Ha let's snoop her podium, shall we? First of all, the line to the phone looks like it got cut. I'll bet those are the two brothers that built the inn and Josiah's house. Looks like there might be some kind of tunnel around here. There's something written on the back. Door in parlor window seat. Let's go check that out, shall we? Here's the parlor seat. Oh, <laughs> hey, thanks. <laughs> How much did I play through Secret of Shadow Ranch? Thanks, we didn't, we didn't change all the pieces. Okay, so this is a secret tunnel. We hit the electricity. From the looks of those letters, I'm not the only one who's been down here recently. There's a sneaky bit, and we go up to this little staircase. Jeepers, I'm behind one of the walls in Emily's room. I'll bet that's how someone makes that picture move. Okay, Selena, I have a confession to make. I actually did get on TikTok. And you're going to be like, wow, Mrs. Barnes, you're a hypocrite. And I'll say, yes, I know. But I dig it, but I don't do it for the dances. I do it for everything else <laughs> yes i i don't make videos at all but i go and i watch like other people's stuff an old pig swell a dollar this pig <laughs> like it's been here for a long time i'll have to double check on what my account is i don't remember what it not okay this is a puzzle that we just click and move and oh that's right to rotate 
Whatever. You're famous. What? You're TikTok famous? So we're going to spell out Creepy's Corner. And we are going to put the moon kind of in the center. Then we put for real though, Lena very much could be famous. I agree with that statement. There we go. Okay, so we have a record that we need to play. And if we keep going. <laughs> Favorites. I can't go in there now. Mr. Topham will see me. So I think at some point we have to come back and we have to sneak in to the place. How do I get the feeling someone's following me? <sighs> Guess I better not leave the lights on. Thanks for doing the pies. The more I do it, the worse I seem to get at it. Here's that box. I'm sure that sewing machine needle is in there somewhere. I see it. Remember, when it comes to using it, you're on your own, kiddo. I think I know why Emily has been seeing and hearing strange things. Well, I'm all ears. Tell me. I found a secret passageway that goes from the inn to Josiah Crowley's old house. And off of it, I found a staircase that leads to a space behind a wall in Emily's room. That's the staircase that's in this old picture. You mean, the noises that Emily's been hearing, the things she's been seeing, it's because someone's been sneaking around behind the wall in her room? It may even be that someone is trying to scare her on purpose. On purpose? Who would want to do something like that? I was able to open the staircase because I saw the picture I just showed you. And I found that picture on the shelf in your podium. You mean it was right there under my nose? Hold the phone! You think I'm the one who's been sneaking around? Can you think of somebody else who may have had access to that picture? Anyone who's ever been behind this desk could have seen that picture. It's hardly fair to go pointing a finger at me. Maybe Emily will know something about it. She went into town to run some errands. At least that's what I told her to do. Heaven knows she could use some fresh air. Well, I'll talk to you later. Don't take any wooden nickels. So, Emily should be gone, so we can snoop in her drawer.
Do you want to come in? What? Oh. I think we're good. [noise] What? Bye, Lena. [laughs] Sounds like [inaudible 2:24:44.00] Hi. [laughs] [laughs] I hope you're having fun and I know this is boring for you. Okay. Let me know if you need help. I can do anything. Well, I didn't start yet. Okay. Sorry, you started. No, not yet. Okay. [noise] [noise] Nope. Um [noise] Okay, well, um Yeah, this is gonna be interesting and um Yeah. Not a whole lot. Yeah. No, not a whole lot. Don't worry. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so this record is real weird. But it has um sound cues that we need to pay attention to, I think. It's like a whole story. Brittany, Jared says hi. He loves you. [laughs] Oh. Whoops. So you're supposed to take notes over the sound effects in red. Oh. That makes sense. Oh, it goes on forever and ever and I think [laughs] That's right. You deserve it. Okay. I think we can get away with listening to the whole record. I can't sing with that. Oh. Yeah, I'm just too tired. Oh, okay. You need to fix the needle in and then we need to, okay. This is why this puzzle, this mini activity is awful. So you use your mouse to guide the dress along the white lines and like the needle passes through it. So you control with your mouse but the slightest movement, so so you'll click and you'll hold. So watch. So if I start trying to make it go like it's so hard because even the smallest like mess up can set it off and Nancy's like, "I need to start over." There. Not bad, Miss Drew. Try it. What the heck? That was the first time I like ever did that. It's really hard when you play it on a laptop because of the like the track pad. But I guess my mouse is actually real nice. Lena, I love that you have plans already. Like, that's awesome. Oh, what am I doing? Oops. Let's go give the dress to the banker. Yes, I love that you have plans already and you're a sixth grader. Like, I love that. Yes. You just got to make sure you brush up on your German. Yes. 
Okay, so that is actually nothing like the experience of sewing. Sewing, in my opinion, is a little bit easier. Coming? All done. This is beautiful. Thank you. Now let's see if that key you found opens up Josiah's safe deposit box. That was Josiah's key, all right, but that is not Josiah's will. It looks like some kind of journal. So Would this. Okay if I kept this? If it was money or jewelry or something like that, I'd turn it over to Topham. But a journal? Finders keepers, as far as I'm concerned. I'll be at my desk if you need me. So this thing. It's oh, nice. yeah. Naturally. Yes, Miss Rex. She's pretty awesome. Um. This journal corresponds to that record with all of the sound effects. Okay. And so we need to have that, but then we also need Anything to... Anything else I can do for you? I guess I'll be going. Come back anytime. Um, get a trivet from that person that Josiah lent it to, and she's somewhere. I feel like she's over I've here. only got half a tank of gas left. I should gas up before I forget. Mrs. Sheldon? Yes? My name's Nancy Drew. I'm a friend of Emily Crandall's. Get on with it, dear. I was wondering, would it be possible for me to see the trivet you borrowed from Josiah Crowley? You may not only see it, you may have it. One can't find it that way. Unfortunately, I've an errand to run, so I can't look for it right now. Maybe I could run the errand for you. I have a car. So I see. A rather expensive car at that. Very well, Miss Drew. Go fetch my bridge card from Miss Drakowski, and upon your return, I shall present you with that trivet. Who's Miss Drakowski? The local telephone operator. You can find her at her house, or try to still tell her as she insists on calling it. The switchboard is in her parlor. As you can imagine, she never entertains. I, on the other hand, am expecting company within the hour, so do hurry. That's cool. Are you Miss Joukowsky? Yeah, and you are? Nancy Drew. I'm a friend of Emily Crandall's. You know, at the Lilac Inn. Oh, yeah, I put you through to your father, didn't I? You pick up those papers for him yet? Actually, I... Wait a minute. How did you know about that? See this headset I'm wearing? I plug it in and, oh, what do you know? I hear things. Look, I'm kind of pressed for time. Going to a party and it takes me a while to get dolled up. What do you need? Mrs. Sheldon asked me to pick up her bridge cards from you. Tell you what, I'll get you those cards if you drive that fancy car of yours over to the orphanage and pick up some raffle tickets from Mrs. O'Shea. I should be able to unload a ton of them tonight. I'd be happy to. Good, I gotta go. Yeah, yeah, I'm coming. So this is what old switchboard operations look like. Pretty cool. That was like how they did the phone lines. A long time ago. Excuse me, are you Mrs. O'Shea? Yes. My name is Nancy Drew and... Stephen, put that down this instant. We do not run with sticks in our hands. Or in our mouths. I'm sorry, you were saying? Miss Joukowsky asked me to pick up some raffle tickets from you. Oh yes, the raffle tickets. The fact of the matter is I... Elsie, no hitting. I can't even think about those raffle tickets right now. I promised the children they'd each get a toy for going a full week without breaking anything, and I'm short five toys. Do not eat that, Clarence. Would you like me to get five toys for you? Oh, goodness, if you could do that, I'd be forever grateful. They can be any kind of toy at all. The children aren't the least bit picky. Of course it tastes bad, Clarence. It's a pine cone. I'd better go rinse out his mouth before. Oh, 
Would you look at that? He's actually chewing it. You're not a squirrel, Clara. Spit that out with your teeth. Okay, so what we need to do... Let's go to the general store. Well, first let's go get gas. And then go to the general store and we're going to find some toys. Yes. Welcome to Zippy's, where Zipless service is Zippily Zap, and Zippy service is the Zippiest. Fill her up. Just 50 cents worth, please. Um. Yes. So I watch. 50 cents. Here you go. I watch this Drive other YouTuber Zippily. who is like a Nancy Drew player. He's kind of annoying, which is part of the reason why I started my own streaming. Um. And he makes these videos that I actually kind of find entertaining. Um, everything wrong with Nancy Drew games. And they're like individual games. And he always like numbers everything that's wrong. And they're hilarious. Maybe I could um, buy some toys for the orphans in here. A vending machine that just sells toys. Keen. Two toys down, three to go. Because I already have that pony. Okay. Um, that makes three toys. Somebody pick a toy. Plane, car, bear, boat. I have two more. Yes. Every Nancy does everybody's chores cliche is what he says. That streamer. Somebody okay, plane. Okay. And then what I have to do is I have to go Four toys. I just need one more. I, I have to go do some telegram runs. And I think yeah, I still have Johnson. Yes. I have to do telegram runs to earn more money and then I can get my final toy are you mr johnson maybe who are you well my name's nancy drew and if you are mr johnson i've got a telegram for you well thank you hey do you want a tip <laughs> sure buy low sell high Thanks. <laughs> oh boy thanks for the tip Oh, okay, so his name, his name is Argelfump. Uh, did you deliver that let telegram? me see if I can I sure did. type Good out. You. Here's your money, and here's your next telegram. Go to the railroad station and deliver this to Willie Joe. Keep up the good work. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Jared. Yes, so Jared and I were watching him and, like, watched all of his um, streams. He played all of the Nancy Drew games. Um, earlier in the year, like, he did a mega marathon, and he streamed, like, all of the games start to finish, back to back to back. And, uh, he's, he's just really kind of just dumb. And his, his voice is annoying, and he constantly has to, like, talk about... Hi, I'm supposed to deliver this telegram to Willie Joe. Yeah. Is that well, you? No, I'm Willie Joe's Uncle John. I see that she gets it, though. She? She, with a capital F. Well, bye. Anyway, he's he's an idiot. But he has quite a, quite a following. Did you deliver that telegram? I sure did. Good for you. Here's your money. And here's your next telegram. Take this to Phil Connor out at Crowmeister Nails. Keep up the good work. Okay, I have enough money that I can go get another toy for 25 cents. All right, give me a toy. Boat, car, bear. Somebody, not Jared, pick it. Um, 
Um, yeah, in other games, or not other games, in other videos he does, we see his face, and he, I don't know, bless his heart, tractor, is that a tractor? That's like a car. Okay. Five toys, that's all I need. <sighs> Alright, let's go give these to the kiddos. Alright. Do you have five toys for me? I certainly do. Oh, that's wonderful. You're such a saint, you hear me? A saint. I'd better get these inside before the children see them. Thank you so much. Uh, Mrs. O'Shea, the raffle tickets? Oh, the raffle tickets? I don't have them, dear. You'll have to pick them up from Belt's gun shop. Then just take them straight to Mr. Kowski. We don't pull hair, Ralphie. Especially when we have jelly on our hands. <sighs> Belt's print shop, wonderful. This is going to end up being where we have to come over here to Bargert's Pond to fish. Sorry, young lady. I'm about to close. I'm just here to Sounds pick up like the goofy. raffle tickets you printed for Mrs. O'Shea. No, darn it. I did tell her I'd have those done today, didn't I? Well, I'm sorry, but they're just going to have to wait until tomorrow. Oh, but I need to have them today. And I need to go fishing. Fishing? My brother-in-law thinks he's hot stuff because he caught an 18-inch largemouth bass this morning. So I bet him I could catch a 19-incher by the end of the day. And if I do, I get his stamp collection. And if I don't, he gets mine. And since stamp collecting is about the only hobby I can afford these days, I am going fishing. I know. You stay here and print those raffle tickets, and I'll go fishing for you. Not everybody can catch a 19-inch largemouth bass, you know. It takes skill and muscle and brains. That's a pretty smart. I can do it, Mr. Phelps. You better be right, because you're not getting those raffle tickets until I get my 19-incher. Excuse my gear, I left everything out at the fishing hole. Great, I'll see you later. Alright, let's go fishing. Remember, they like minnows, and they like sticking to the grass. All right, we're gonna come here to Boggart's Pond. And he left his gear here for us. First thing I need to do is bait my hook. Minnows. Yuck. Now I toss this in the water. And when the yeah, probably. goes under the water, I need to pull the line up fast. All right, over in the grass. Whoa. All right. We gotta wait. So when we see that little white dot go under wa the water, we click and pull it back. I caught one. Nineteen inch, but that's not a large mouth. Looks like nineteen inches to me. That's not. Nope. I need to give the fish I caught to Mr. Phelps before I try catching another one. Crap. I should get this fish to Mr. Phelps That's before the smell gets any worse. <laughs> I'm just gonna go anyway, because I don't think I can get rid of it. That's not a large mouth. Let's see what you got in there. Yes, How a barger. Oh, I got it. You did it. Oh. Here, let me take it from you. <laughs> Please do. I think it's starting to get a little ripe. Just rest yourself a minute while I get those raffle tickets. There you go. Ten dozen tickets to the annual orphan's benefit. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have to go make a telephone call. To your brother-in-law? Yeah, the one who used to collect stamps. <laughs> Bye. We're probably actually more than halfway done. We're probably like 75% done, at least 60%. I've only got half a tank of gas left. Uh, I should gas up before I forget. Nope. Nope. Oh my gosh, no. I need to go get those raffle tickets and get the stupid trivet. All right, we're going back out. 
<gasps> Alright, let's go get gas. Such a hassle. Welcome to Zippy's, where Zipless service is Zippily Zap, and Zippy service is the zippiest. Fill her up. Just 25 cents worth, please. Man, I wish. That's like not even a gallon. Now. Here you go. Drive Zippily. Shoot. Okay. Joukowsky needs the raffle ticket. You got those raffle tickets for me? I sure do. Right. And here are Mrs. Sheldon's bridge cards. One of the gals spilled mucky. Oh, spiders. Time, but I cleaned them up. Or sharks. Not tell Mrs. Sheldon, okay? Okay. Thanks for your help, Miss Jakowski. Thanks for your help. Bye now. That's a good question, hun. I don't know if our car needs to be filled up or not. You're the one who drives it. Lena, what would your boggart be? Do you have my bridge cards? Right here. Good. And here is Josiah's trivet. I didn't realize when I asked to borrow it that it was such an eyesore. But once a sumptuous dish of my buff stroganoff was placed atop it, I assure you, no one noticed. Now do run along. My guests will be arriving any minute, and that dress of yours is, uh, well. I like this dress. It's very flouncy. Everyone hates on Nancy's style. Like in the other games, everybody hates on, like, Nancy's mom jeans. And her, like, horse t-shirts. <laughs> Everybody hates on her fashion here. What the heck? Alright. So you have a very Hermione boggart. Okay, so Josiah's trivet. So the, um... The symbols coordinate with the sound effects from that Creepy's Corner record. And then the, the, the sound effect symbol corresponds with a letter that happens to open up this journal. So, hoofbeats. Hang on. Let's look at the trivet. Hoofbeats. Thunder. Thunder. Rain. A door opening, footsteps, swords, swords, thunder, coins. Okay, so we are going to spell out Goodfellow. G O O D F E L L O W. Robin Goodfellow is his char characters. Played in a Midsummer Night's Dream. Yes, so Puck was also known as Robin Goodfellow in A Midsummer Night's Dream. Ooh. Pyramus, 7.057 megahertz. Bisbee, 7.050 megahertz. It looks like some kind of record of the people Josiah talked to on his ham radio. Okay, so we need to go and do the ham radio. Oh, wait. We need cues, though. So now we need the book. Hello, Miss Drew. Hi, Mr. Topham. Okay. Now what? 
Could I see that copy of A Midsummer Night's Dream you have there? Why? Well, you said it was Josiah's favorite play. I'd just like to take a look at it. It's a very old copy. I'd rather it not be handled unnecessarily, lest it fall completely apart. I'm sorry, Miss Drew, but request denied. It was nice talking to you. Drop by anytime. So we need to go back to the inn and sneak in through the tunnel and get a look at the book then. So let's go do that while he's in a session with uh, a, a client or a pupil. Ooh, I got some. Ah, Christie's. Ooh, okay. I guess I better not leave the lights on. I don't hear anybody. Now would be a good time for me to sneak in. But we need to get in and we need to give the, the cat his mouse because otherwise he's going to meow the entire time. And then we're going to get cat. So we got to find the mouse. Mouse! Yuri, be quiet. You're disturbing us. Okay. <laughs> Josiah must have circled these quotes. So these are what we need to give. We need to say to Pyramus. Something tells me I better write down all the stuff that's circled here in my journal. And Thisbe. And we need to remember which order so that way we can. Um, and I think we can go out the front door. I can't go out the front door. You'll hear me. Oh, okay. That's right. <laughs> no, it was not Monty or Romeo. Guess I better not leave the lights on. Okay. So now we can go to the carriage house and we can do the ham radio to flute pyramus and thisbe and then we get clues from them and then that ends up helping us with the big clock right there too radio so Looks we want like to was a ham radio operator call flute and his is 7.025 megahertz so the dot seven i'm going to do this one to two or zero two and then this one needs to be five hello flute are you there this is flute you don't sound like Puck, so explain yourself. Uh, my name's Nancy Drew. So where's Puck? Well, I'm pretty sure Puck's real name was Josiah Crowley. And I hate to say it, but he passed away earlier this year. Ah, oh, that's a shame. Heck, I never got to give him his sentence. What sentence is that? Well, see, a while back, Puck dictated a sentence to me and told me that if and when he recited a certain passage from Shakespeare, I was to respond with that sentence. Weird fellow, that Puck. If I tell you the passage, will you tell me the sentence? Okay, his cue uh, from that journal that I opened that was in the safety deposit box based on the 
sound effect code that's with the trivet and that record that I played. Okay, his cue is shall. Shall we there fond pageant see? Lord, what fools these mortals be. That's it. Here, let me check my logbook for the response. Hang on. Uh, now I'm supposed to say, leave by road when the owner is in, because then there will be thieves about. Hobo signs. In, because then there will be thieves about. Those were Puck's exact words. Is Flute your real name? No, it's just what Puck insisted on calling me. What'd you say his real name was? Josiah Crowley. Strange. I never heard of him. Why is that strange? Uh, he led me to believe he was this big cheese out in Hollywood, you know, some famous producer, director or something. Said he owned his own studio. He didn't own a studio, and he certainly didn't live in Hollywood. I'll be darned. So he was just lying to me. Well, that's all right. I may have told him a fib or three over the years myself. Like the time I told him I was a scratch golfer. <laughs> I don't even know what that means. In any case, hope I've been of some help. Over and out. All right, then we do Thisby, 705. Let's see if I can, no, I can't really go the other way. And then we do zero. Hello, can anyone hear me? Speak to me, hello? I'm Thisby, but only Puck calls me that. Who's Thisby? My name's Nancy Drew. I'm afraid I have some bad news about Puck. Oh dear, they closed the play he was starring in tonight. That's why I haven't heard from him. He's too far down in the dumps. <laughs> I love Olaf. Something like that. Samantha. Actually, you haven't heard from I him because he passed no away several Samantha. months ago. Oh my, that's worse. Isn't I love Frozen too. And after all that rigmarole he went through, making sure I knew my line and understood my cue. Your cue? Yes, you see, Puck, or whatever his real name is, or was, Puck wanted to share his love of acting with me, so he gave me a line to say, a very curious line, I might add, and told me to repeat it only after I heard my cue, a passage written by Mr. William Shakespeare. So if I cue you with a passage, he'll respond with a line he gave you to say? Immediately. I know it by heart, you see. Here it goes. Yes. This is why I love the actor who does Olaf's voice, Josh Gad. He's awesome. Or LeFou in the uh, live-action Beauty and the Beast. The, the little guy who's all about Gaston. Okay, if we shadows. If we shadows have offended, think but this and all is mended. That you have but slumbered here while these visions did appear. I remember in middle school. <sighs> the authorities are alert for bad water. So do not go this way. The authorities are alert for bad water, so do not go this way. That's what I was to say, although my delivery was much better when Puck was coaching me. And I... now, as Puck was oh. fond of saying, I bid you adieu. Over and out. Actually, it wasn't middle school. It was my freshman year of high school. We ha we read the uh, Midsummer Night's Dream, and we had to memorize... Um, Puck's monologue, and I think that's part of it. Okay, seven and fifty-seven thousandths. <laughs> yes, my cousin Emma was sadness for Halloween one year. Hello? Can anyone hear me? Speak to me. Hello? This is Pyramus. Who are you? My name's Nancy Drew. Does somebody named Puck usually call you on this frequency? Somebody named Puck used to. Apparently he found something better to do. Haven't talked to him in months. That's because he passed away not too long ago. Oh. Well, that's a good excuse, I guess. <laughs> How did you know he called me Pyramus? This guy. I'm a friend of a friend of his. I found your name and radio frequency in his journal. Why are you Lena, you remembered Did my you trick start? for I mean, decimals. Did ever ask you to tell him something whenever he read a certain passage from Shakespeare? Whenever he rattled off this Shakespeare quote, I was supposed to rattle off this stupid 
say you know about that. Long story. But if I were to rattle off the quote, there's no reason why you can't tell me the stupid saying, right? Well, come to think of it, <laughs> he never said the quote had to come from him. So, yeah, I guess I could tell you. Okay, his cue. Thou speakest aright. Thou speakest aright. I am that merry wanderer of the night. How'd you know? Long story. What did he tell you to say in response? Wait a minute. I had to write it down. Here. You're gonna love this. A barking dog would do well to hold his tongue in a dangerous neighborhood. A barking dog would do well to hold his tongue in a dangerous neighborhood. I told you it was stupid. I really appreciate your help. <laughs> I don't think he had a car. He tried to tell <laughs> Except all the important stuff. Lena, you make me look bad, man. Okay. Over to this big clock. So flute. We do. So this is. So hit, hit the road. So leave by the road. When the owner is in, because then there will be thieves about, okay? Fisbees is the authorities are alert for bad water. So do not go this way. Okay, a barking dog would do well, <gasps> excuse me, um, would do well to hold his tongue, so be quiet, in a dangerous neighborhood. Oh. Okay, bottom is not a ham operator. There was a letter that we looked at in the drawer uh, that was, was from Josiah to Gloria. Oh, hey, thanks. <laughs> My cousin texted me and said, bless you, you sneezed. Okay. From the okay. You are a kind lady. A uh, cat who sparkles like good water. Wait. Good water is this one. And makes me think the sky is the limit. Ha ha! Okay. Your goal is to reach the end of the path and to land exactly on the last spot on the board. No going over. Each card can only be used once. You do not need to use all the cards. To take a shortcut, you must be on a spot with a picture on it and use the same picture to take the pathway. Good luck. Okay. So I click that. And so basically, it's like a board game. So I'm going to do four. One, two, three, four. So that symbol is a snowflake. So I'm going to click the snowflake and I take that shortcut. Do I have a <laughs> why I love you. You're so precious with your positivity and upliftment. Okay. Um, we are not going to take the shortcut. <laughs> we are going to click six, one, seven, two, 
nine, three. Yay! Wow. We broke it. No. <gasps> a gold golf ball. And a note. Take this to Tiny Town and for oodles of fun, use it there to hit a hole in one. A golf ball. No doubt meant to be used on that golf course of Josiah's. Oh, shoot. Go on, Lena. Okay. We're going to go to the mini golf course. And I'm going to get a golf club. So I do not need to take the golf ball. Well, I can, but. Okay. So, we are going to hit this hole in one. And it gets shot over here. And there's another, another key. Another safe deposit box key? Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> all right let's go to the bank you've got to go talk to emily she's in a bad way what do you mean what's happened please go talk to her she won't listen to me i'm no help at all okay we are on like the last like five ten ish minutes of the game Just go back to River Heights, Nancy. But I think I know where the real will is. It doesn't matter. I can't run the inn anyway. I'm going to have to sell it. What do you mean? I took a nap after I got back from running errands, and when I woke up, this was in my hand. It's one of the necklaces that I thought had been stolen. I have no idea how it got there. I must do things and not remember. All this responsibility on top of losing Mom, I can't cope with it. I'm having a... What Jane call it? A nervous breakdown. No, you're not. I don't want to talk anymore. Go home. You're just making things worse. Oh, okay. Bye, Felicia. All right. Let's just go see Jim Archer at the bank. Go open the safety deposit box that that key is for. Ooh. I've only got half a tank of gas left. I should gas up before I okay. forget. Okay, we are actually going to need to go deliver some telegrams because we need to have plenty of gas because we're going to have to do a car chase. So who... Okay, Kohlmeister Nails. And, like, we literally are going to have to, like, run all over the place. I have a telegram for Phil Connor. I'm Phil. Thank you. I got a tip for you. Here. Ow, that's a nail. That's what we make here. Nails. Beauty, ain't she? Yeah, thanks, but no thanks, Mr. Connor. Bye. Did you deliver that telegram? I sure did. Good for you. Here's your money. And here's your next telegram. This one here is for Helen C. White. She's at the library. Keep up the good work. <laughs> that's right. Lena cried when we told her we were preggers. <laughs> A dedicated student. Yes. Okay. Oh, public library's right here. I did not have to go over. I have far. a telegram here for Shh. We were in a library. Sorry. This telegram is for Helen C. White. Who? Helen C. White. Bill and Steve Reich. Helen C. White. Shh. Here, a telegram from Miss White. I'll give it to her. Thank you. You're well done, Miss White. Never mind. Shh. <laughs> Don't speak up in the library. Did you deliver that telegram? I sure did. Good for you. Here's your money. And here's your next telegram. Mm, this one goes to Molly out at Vash's Dairy. Keep up the good work. Okay. Let's go get 50 cents worth. Of gas. 
or as the Brits say, Welcome petrol. Welcome to Zippy's, where zipless service is zippily zapped and zippy service is the zippiest. Fill her up. Just 50 cents worth, please. That'll be 50 cents. Here you go. Drive zippily. Okay. <gasps> Let's go to the bank. For basically, like, the last task other than the car chase we have to do. I found another safe deposit box key that belonged to Josiah. Impossible. Josiah only had one box, and you've already opened it. Can you tell me whose key this is? It is one of ours. Where did you get it? I won it playing golf at Josiah's with a special ball. I had to ace one of the holes. Why does that sound familiar? I know why. That's what Clara always called me, her ace in the hole. That's who this key belongs to, Clara Pitford. Josiah Crowley cross-dressed as Clara Pickford. So, Clara Pickford was really Josiah Crowley in disguise. Apparently, he loved playing tricks like that on people and hiding things right under their noses. Okay, here we go. So there's the will. I wonder what this is. And there's a picture. Dove, now Crandall, and Jane Willoughby, circa 1912. Jane Willoughby? That doesn't look the least bit like Jane Willoughby. No, it certainly doesn't. I'd better get back to the Lilac Inn and have a talk with her right now. So, cutscene. Jane's leaving. Move out of the way, would you please? I'm kind of in a hurry. You're not going anywhere until you tell me who you really are. What are you talking about? I just saw a picture of Jane Willoughby. The real Jane Willoughby. It's been swell knowing you, sister. All right, we gotta get her. I can't let Jane out of my sight. So you have to essentially follow her until there's mention of where, like, where she's headed. Well, she just, like, drives everywhere. <clears throat> and this happens. So we have to second chance anytime we sight. get her out of the screen and we can't catch up to her, like, right then. We can't take any shortcuts. And what's crappy is, like, you can't speed up. She just, like, did a big circle. I bet she's heading for the state line. I know. I'll take a shortcut and head her off. That's all she wrote. No, the... Josiah Crowley died before Gloria did. Why couldn't did. you just mind your own business? She landed yeah. in the pie shipment. I know you get home from school in a couple of days, but I couldn't wait to tell you. I just solved a mystery. I figured out that Emily Crandall's guardian was really an imposter named Marion, who intercepted the letter Emily wrote to Jane Willoughby after her mom died. She pretended to be Jane not only so she could steal Emily's valuables, but so she could convince Emily that she was incapable of running Lilac Inn and that she should sell it and split the money with her. On top of all that, I found Josiah Crowley's real will. In it, he left Emily so much money that she'll be able to hire all the people she needs to keep the inn going. He left Jim Archer a ton of money too, which means he won't have to close his bank. And from now on, he'll be able to buy his wife a new dress anytime he wants. As for Richard Topham, Josiah left him nothing. Although Topham still refuses to admit that he forged the first will and insists that he's going to contest the will I found. Dad says it's highly doubtful he'll succeed and that he'd be better off sticking to spoon tricks. Anyway, when you get home, I'll give you all the details over a nice big piece of slightly damaged cherry pie. <laughs> Wait till you hear that oh, part good. of the story. As always, Nancy. We did it!
just over three hours. Lightning speed puzzle solving. Awesome. Great news, I think. So this is he game number 13. This is a good one too. Mystery. Only this mystery takes place on a train. But not just any train. A train that was found abandoned years ago in the middle of nowhere. All of its passengers have simply vanished. Some people say the train is jinxed. Others say it's haunted. I mean, it'll be fun to finally get to work alongside the Hardy Boys. But I just hope the trip we're going on doesn't turn out to be, you know, one way. So this, this next game will feature the Hardy Boys. Yep. <laughs> no, so when I was a kid, Lena, that was just a family nickname. Skatey Skate Kate. <laughs> Okay, that's it. We did it. We did it. We did it. We did it. Okay, so we'll see if I end up streaming next week or not. Um, next weekend. Uh, hope you guys had fun. I had fun. This is a good one. Um, definitely up there on my list of like fun ones to play. But there's still great games to come. Um, next week's game is pretty cool. Uh, a very great meme is featured in this game. This next game. I will definitely <laughs> follow Lena on TikTok. Um, if you're on TikTok, follow her too. Lena Lafayette 8. Um, I don't remember what my username is on TikTok. Let me check real, real quick. If I'm not careful, TikTok will yell at me when I open my app. Oh, it is Skatey Skate Kate. My, my TikTok app. <laughs> so, alrighty. As my husband says, every night, mighty good nighty. It's late. Everyone get a good night's sleep. We'll see you next time.